Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Welcome to our QuickBooks Online Tutorials. Today, I'm going to teach you how to set up your advanced options in QuickBooks Online. You can view all 46 of our free QuickBooks Online Tutorials by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials. So let's start setting our advanced options at our dashboard in QuickBooks Online. If you don't have a subscription to QuickBooks Online, you can get a free 30-day trial by clicking the link below this video. So from our dashboard, let's go to our cogwheel in the upper right corner, click that, and then under your company, let's go to account and settings. In the left menu bar, scroll down and we can click the advanced settings. So here's where we're going to work today. There's nine different categories of these advanced settings that need to be set. So let's start with the first category of accounting options. The first two are our first month of our fiscal year and the first month of our income tax year. This is almost always January. Uh, however, if you know that your fiscal year starts at a different time, this is where you would input that. Um, so for instance, if you're a June 30th fiscal year, then that means the first month of your year would be July. So you can set those two options according to your company. Again, almost everybody is January. and almost everybody has an income tax year the same as their fiscal year. Accounting method you can choose from either accrual or cash. I recommend accrual here even if you are on the cash basis for your tax return because you're able to print your financial statements on either a cash or accrual basis regardless of what you select here. Um, but this would also allow you then to track accounts payable which are amounts owed to you as well as accounts receivable uh, which are amounts, sorry I said that backwards, lets you track accounts payable, which are amounts you owe to your vendors, or accounts receivable, which are the amounts your customers owe you. So I recommend selecting accrual in your accounting method. The next option is to close your books. The reason you want to close your books is so that you don't accidentally make an entry to a period in which the tax return has already been filed. Uh, the only exception would be if the, if the entry is going to be large enough that you're willing to file an amended tax return, then you can go ahead and make an entry in a prior year. Otherwise, run any new changes through the current year. So here I've selected to close the books. The closing date is 2019. This option will just give me a warning but allow me to make the change and that's usually sufficient if you're the only user. However, if there are other users and you want to prevent them from making changes, you actually can require them to enter a password. Okay. So we'll set it back here. Good. So those are your accounting options. I'm going to, you would want to click save. I'm just going to cancel. The next type of options are our company type. And the first thing we need to do, actually the only thing we need to do in this uh, section is to list the type of company that we are. Um, so this would be the type of tax form that you file. You should know what that is. If you don't know what that is, just click not sure. Um, really has very little effect. Obviously when you go to file your tax return you're going to need to know which form to file but as far as the bookkeeping the uh, the company type makes very little difference. So um, I'm going to change this back to we are a uh, corporation here um, but I'm going to cancel. Okay great. Next we need to deal with your chart of accounts. So within your chart of accounts our first option is whether or not we want to enable account numbers. Uh, this is purely a preference so you can just list your accounts out by name or you can have an account number followed by the name. Traditionally accounts have numbers, accountants like account numbers. Uh, one of the big benefits is it helps you organize your accounts. Um, so even within say assets you could have 1,000 accounts, you know you could have accounts starting with 1,000 as your uh, revenue accounts, accounts starting as uh, 2000 could be your other income accounts and so forth. So the numbers can be used to kind of organize your accounts. The other advantage of using account numbers is that you can quickly call up the account instead of having to type in an entire account name. You could just type in the four digit account number or however many digits you choose to use um, and the account will pop up. So it can be a little bit faster if uh, you memorize the account numbers. So purely purely a, uh, a user preference there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave show account numbers marked. Um, your shipping account. So if you charge shipping on your invoices, QuickBooks needs to know which account, which income account you would like that uh, uh, revenue to be placed in. 
Here, we're just going to choose the default of shipping income. Same thing with discounts given. If you give a discount for prompt payment on your invoices, where do you want that discount showing up on your income statement? We're just going to stick with the default discounts given. And then the tips account. If you collect tips that are later distributed to your employees, uh, then that's a current liability. And so you need to tell it where on your balance sheet would you like to record this current liability. And we're just going to stick with the default undistributed tips. Now, if these three accounts are not showing up in your advanced settings, it's because you haven't turned on these options in your sales settings. So I don't want to click away from the screen just yet, but under your sales settings here, you can turn on all of these uh, options. And finally, your markup income account. So if you if you pass through expenses to customers on their invoices and you mark those expenses up, so let's say if you spend $100 on supplies you're going to charge the customer $120 for supplies that $20 markup has to go somewhere on your uh, income statement and so here is where you designate the account and again I'm just going to stick with the default of markup account so these are all pretty good defaults if you want to get fancy if you want to have a little bit better tracking this is where you can set that up good so you'd want to hit save I'm just going to hit cancel next section we need to look at are your category options. So if we click near categories here, we can see the main options relate with tracking expenses and revenue by classes and by locations. This is really one of the great things about QuickBooks Online. Uh, all your transactions can be tracked by both class and location at the same time. So an example of classes, if you were a, a retailer might be, you know, groceries might be one class and perhaps cookware might be another class. Um, you might have multiple locations and so you could put in each multiple location. So when you print financial statements you could actually separate them by cookware at X location or cookware at Z location. So it's a really powerful way to be able to get a lot more insight from your financial statements. So in my case here, Paul's Plumbing, we have both the track classes and the track locations uh, turned on. Um, if you're using classes, it's really important that every single transaction gets labeled to a class. If you want to, you could make just you could even make a class called unclassified or generic or something for things that that you don't know where they fit exactly. Um, but I would make sure everything's assigned somewhere. And so, click this box, and that'll warn you if you try to save a transaction that isn't assigned a class. Okay. Um, so here you can choose do you want to assign a class to an entire transaction or to each row in a transaction. And I would recommend a row because I could see instances where you purchase supplies and maybe that one purchase goes to multiple classes. Um, and so you need to be able to, to assign each line in that transaction, a class versus the transaction as a whole. Track locations, again, if you have multiple locations, you could turn on locations here, um, a location label. Um, so a lot of times the location is a physical location, but you could also use this to track different divisions, department, businesses, property, stores, territory. Um, so we're going to keep our label as location, but you track locations doesn't have to be physical locations. You could have some other kind of definition of how you want to divide your company up. So I'm going to keep this as a location. Okay, so you'll want to hit save here. I'm just going to hit cancel. Now, a little bit off topic here, but I want to show you how to actually set up your classes and location. All this does is turn them on. You still have to set them up. Um, so let's cancel out of our account settings here. Go to our cogwheel and lists. And within our lists, we have our classes. So these are all the different classes that we have set up for Paul's Plumbing. This is where you would come and you could add new classes. Go back to our lists, and here are our locations. Uh, let's see. Go back to all lists, and here are our locations. Okay, here we actually only have one location. We could add more if we wished. Okay, so again, a little bit off topic, but that's after you activate the classes and the locations, you go to these lists in order to actually input additional classes and locations. So let's go back to our advanced settings, Cogwheel, your company, accountant settings, and advanced. And yes, I'm going to switch without saving. 
The next set of options we need to look at are our automation options. So these are things that QuickBooks can do to help you save time. So click in the automation area, open up the options. Um, so the first is the pre-fill forms with previously entered content. That is extremely helpful. Um, so generally if you select a particular vendor, it'll pre-fill whatever you did for that vendor last time. Oftentimes it's exactly what you want, save you a lot of time. Certainly recommend keeping that one on. Automatically apply credits. So if your vendor gives you a credit for some items returned, you want to automatically apply that against any invoices. I'm going to turn this off. That's a personal preference, but I like to keep more control over what's happening within QuickBooks so I know exactly what's happening and, and I don't have to try to go back and figure out what QuickBooks did. Um, so I'm going to turn off the apply credits automatically. I'm also going to turn off the automatically invoice unbuild activity. Again, that's something I want to have complete control over. Um, I don't want to have to try to figure out what QuickBooks did and automatically apply bill payments. So a bill payment is once you, you've entered a bill and then later on you write a check to pay the bill. Um, it'll automatically apply that. Again, I try to, to keep control. So again, this is really personal preferences. Some people like to automate everything. Um, I like to, to do it myself so that I have a, a clear understanding of what's happening in QuickBooks. Again, purely personal preference. So I'm going to click Save. The next set of options will be in our project. So let's click in the projects area and we actually only have one option to deal with. So organize all job related activities in one place. So this is where you turn on if you want to do project accounting. So if you're something like a roofing company or any kind of construction company really, um, landscaping company where you have big projects for clients and you want to track your income and expense by project, this is where you turn that on. So very, very helpful um, for that type of business. Um, so again, this is not this. You don't want to confuse class reporting with project reporting. So classes are different types of products or services that you provide to a number of different clients. Projects are work you're doing for a particular client. So you might have multiple projects for a particular client and you want to see which projects are making you money and which are not. So again, depending on what your company is, you want you can turn that on or off uh, right here. So I'm going to cancel out of this. Next set of advanced options are time tracking. Click anywhere in the time tracking area to open up your options. Um, essentially, if you're going to track employee time and bill it to customers, then you need both of these options turned on. So this is going to add a service field to your timesheet. So when you fill out a timesheet for your employee or they fill out their own timesheet, uh, they can actually enter um, a service item so that you know exactly how they spent their time. And you can set up these service items with different billable rates. And so if you're billing your employee's time or your time to your customers, then you absolutely uh, need to have this option activated. Uh, the second option to make a single time activity billable to customers. Yes, again, if you're billing time to your customers, you absolutely want this option uh, turned on. This allows you to have uh, multiple uh, activities in your timesheet. Without this, you can only bill one client for that employee's time. So if that employee works for multiple customers, which is most likely the case, then you need to have this single time activity billable to your customers. So they can bill each single activity they do differently to different customers. Um, show the billing rate to users entering time. Um, perhaps if you're the only user, uh, you would want to show this. If you have employees, I doubt you want to show this. Um, but again, personal preference, whatever your business prefers. Um, first day of work week, again, personal preference. I don't know, typically our weeks start on Sunday, um, but sometimes people like to show work week starting on Monday. Again, personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Next option deals with our currency in QuickBooks Online's ability to use multiple currencies for your books. So uh, multiple currencies, this would be if you're dealing internationally. Uh, this is not regarding uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, they are not treated as a real currency in the United States. So this would be if you're dealing with other currencies outside the United States. Um, you need to select your home currency. If you're in the United States, then that would be the US dollar. You can then turn on multiple currencies and it gives you a really important warning here. It tells you that once you turn on multiple currency, you can't turn it off, 
you can't change your home currency so make sure your home currency is correct it's going to add some extra fields in QuickBooks and some features are no longer going to be available so turning on multi currency is not undoable so don't turn this on simply because oh someday we might be dealing with another currency if you have a current need for it you're currently working in multiple currencies then you have to turn it on but make sure your home currency is correct first if you're not currently dealing with it then don't turn this on so I'm going to turn it back off and in fact I'm just going to cancel out of here and that's the currency finally we have some other preferences at the bottom um, our date format purely personal preference how would you like your dates formatted um, number format is just personal preference a customer label if you would rather call your customers clients so a lot of times professional service firms like bookkeeping firms will call their customers uh, clients if you're a nonprofit you might want to call them donors or guests if you're some sort of member organization you have members or you can be patients for medical providers tenants for for real estate company so you can change the name uh, of what customers are called a uh, warn if a duplicate check number is used I think this is always a good warning to have so if you accidentally enter two check numbers it'll warn you of that um, if you try to to enter a bill number that's already been used for that vendor so this is actually a really important one so I'm going to turn that on um, if you receive a bill from a vendor and you type in the number if you've already typed in that number before it's going to warn you because you may have already entered that uh, vendor bill not uncommon I've had instances where vendors will uh, fax me a bill and I enter it and then they put a bill in the mail and I go to enter it again and it catches it and it says oh you've already entered this bill without that option it's possible I would have paid it twice probably would have caught it but this gave me a heads up um, warn if you have duplicate journal numbers uh, used. so if you make journal entries you want to keep them all separate numbers probably not as big a deal uh, but another good warning and if you're inactive for how long um, how do you, when do you want to be signed out I say for an hour uh, again so if somebody comes by your computer you're logged out okay and we can save those and that's setting up all your advanced preferences in QuickBooks Online I know that this has been a fairly long uh, a fairly long session compared to the other sessions but this is really important information and this is really where you can set some of the options to make QuickBooks Online very powerful so please Google Fit Small Business free QuickBooks Online tutorials and you can view our other 46 free tutorials. I hope this was useful and I appreciate your time. You have a great day.